a story, genre study. Procedural texts tell readers how to do or make something. When you read how to read a story, notice directions for readers to follow, main topic and details, steps that show order, ways visuals and words help readers understand the text, set a purpose, read to make smart guesses or inferences about things the author does not say, use clues in the text and pictures to help you, power words, cozy, steaming, clue, sense, pause, disturb, rattled, tackled. How to Read a Story by Kate Messner, illustrated by Mark Siegel. Step one, find a story, a good one. It can have princesses and castles, if you like that sort of thing, or witches and trolls, as long as they're not too scary. Step two, find a reading buddy, a good one. A buddy can be older, or younger, or a person your age, or maybe not a person at all. Make sure your reading buddy is nice and snuggly, and make sure you both like the book. If you don't agree, go back to step one. Sometimes it takes a few tries to find just the right book. Step three, find a cozy reading spot. Outside is fun, but not if it's very cold. Unless you have thick woolen blankets and hats and scarves and cups of steaming hot cocoa. And if it's not very hot, unless you have trees to shade you from the sun, a hammock to catch cool breezes and tall glasses of icy lemonade. Inside is good. Couches are cozy. So are chairs big enough for two. Just be careful not to get stuck. Step four, look at the book's cover. Can you guess what it's about? Read the title. That might be a clue. Step five, open the book. This is the exciting part. Read the story in a loud, clear voice. Not too slow and not too fast. You can point to words if you like, but you don't have to do that. Once upon a time. Step six, when the characters talk, whatever's being said, Say it in a voice to match who's talking. I will save the kingdom. I am the most powerful in all the land. I'm hungry for lunch. Soon the castle will be mine. Blah. Step seven. No matter what you read, hold the book so your buddy can see the pictures. Buddies get impatient when they can't see well. Step eight. If there are words you don't know, try sounding them out or looking at the pictures to see what makes sense. They were afraid the dragon would burn down the cast, cast, oh, the castle. If you need a break, you can pause for a minute and talk to your reading buddy to predict what might happen next. Will the castle catch on fire? Will the princess tame the dragon? Will the robot marry the princess? Will the horse make friends with the dragon? Will the dragon eat them all for lunch? Step nine. When you get to the exciting parts, make your voice sound exciting too. Who dares disturb me in my cave? The dragon growled. Oh dear, oh no. The robot was so scared, all his metal parts rattled. What would they do? But the princess tackled that dragon and held him down. You must promise you'll leave our kingdom in peace when you and your buddy can't stand it a second longer. Turn the page to read how things work out. Step 10. When the book is over, say the end and then if it was a really good story, go right back to the beginning and start all over again. Turn and talk. Use details from how to read a story to answer these questions with a partner. One, make inferences. Why is it important to find just the right book for you and your reading buddy? Two, how are the numbered steps in the text connected? What does the author want you to learn from them? Three, 
How do you think the author feels about reading? How do you think she wants others to feel about it? Use details from the text to explain your ideas. Talking tip. Your ideas are important. Be sure to speak loudly and clearly as you share them. Write more steps. Prompt. Think about how following the steps in how to read a story can help make reading fun. Now think about what makes reading fun for you. What other steps could you add to the text? Plan. First, draw two steps that you would like to share with others. Be sure they are different from the steps in the text. 